Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be painting a loose acrylic landscape by using a reference photo. I have an extensive class on Skillshare um, with extra brush stroke exercises and techniques and a lot more tips and tricks. Um, so if you want to watch an extended real-time version of this painting, you can get a premium membership access free for one month. This is a special offer that won't last very long, so grab it while you can. The link is in the description. If you've seen me before and you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so right now. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Alifia and I hope you enjoy and subscribe by the end of this. I also have a giveaway that I will mention at the very end. So stay tuned um, if you are interested in participating. All right, so now let's dive right into today's painting. The size that I have printed out is a 6x8 inch, uh, which is also what I will be working with for today's project. Um, this reference pick is my own and it's taken by me. Um, they are California roads, um, if you're interested to know. Now, since this pick is almost the exact same size, it will be easier to transfer to our sketch. Here I'm making little marks to help me understand where to begin the mountain. So the point where the mountains meet is a little more to the right but very close to the center as you can see here. So make a little note of that when you begin. So using the help of these marks, block off these shapes and section them out purely based on color. You do not need to go detailed, uh, but just give your landscape enough shapes so that when you begin your base color, which will be the next step, it will be easy for you to just lay the color on. Here I'm just making uh, mental notes on where the trees are going to go. Um, this will be painted over, but it's just for me to visualize this a little bit. So to start with the sky, nice and easy, all you need is blue and white. The names of every color that I will be using is listed in the projects and resources tab below. So I want the sky to be pretty light, which means lots of white and only the tiniest bit of blue. Here I'm testing the color and it looks perfect. I'm going to add a little extra white to the top corner just to give some impression of clouds. Alright, so now let's move on to painting the base colors for the dark mountains here. I am using olive green and a little black to start with the left mountain that we see. Use any medium sized flat brush you have and um, sort of just cover that entire triangle shape.
trying to block off all the darks that I see, so I'm moving on to the bottom pavement section, which is pretty much a, a really dark gray. So I'm just adding some more black to this mixture and, you know, just kind of blocking off that part. Okay, next up is the road, which appears to be gray, but it also has a lot of warm tones to it. So I switched my brush to a small fillboard brush, and I'm using some black and white and a little tinge of that green as well, along with some raw sienna to add to the warm tone of the road. Here I'm just adding a little variation of a darker gray to the center. Um, this is just the initial sort of block of, you know, blocking of the base color stage. So don't worry too much about details yet. We will get to that slowly. Okay, so now that I've covered majority of all my darks, let's move on to the lights and the midtones. I'm starting with light sap green and white to paint the middle mountain. I'm using an even smaller filbur brush for this one. If you look closely to the mountain towards the left, um, it does have some warm tones to it. So I'm adding raw sienna to the green and white to paint that base. Great, now let's go ahead and block off those last two shapes that we have left, which are those grassy bits. So I went ahead and did the base a really nice beige color with raw sienna and white and applied a flat wash to both those sides. It's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad in the hurt Perfect, so now that we are done with the initial base layer, it is time to spice it up and sort of add more build up of layers. I know you tried so hard Ooh, I know you've done your part so now we're going to pay very close attention to all these colors we see on these darker mountains. There are still some variations of mid-tone greens I see on there, so I'm adding some olive green, light sap green, and white to make few marks to those mountains. Okay, 
so going back to those beige warm tones I see on the mountain, I am adding some raw sienna, white, but also adding some burnt sienna this time because I see some underlying like reddish brown tones to it with a little tinge of pink as well. I don't know if you can see that, but I definitely see a little bit of that. So yeah, I find this combination that perfect deeper nude color, if you will. Again, we're not painting details, but simple, short, and long strokes. Some bigger, some smaller. That is how I like painting my loose paintings. They are just a combination of strokes in different direction and thickness. For the grass sections towards the side of the road, I'm mixing in some olive green, black and white and kind of going in vertical upward motions with my brush. So using the side of the brush will also give you different variations in thickness. Let's now go ahead and add some trees. I'm using the same fillboard brush and using the belly of the brush to get these simple strokes. to the road I do see some more warmer tones to it um, with a little hint of that deep beige undertone so I'm mixing in burnt sienna black and white It's just a lot of back and forth going in to match the color I see in the reference pick.
here I'm just getting the details in the middle so adding that black curve with the yellow lines next to it And keeping in mind to go upwards in a slanted direction um, because that's how that little pavement is um, when you do paint you always want to keep in mind of the direction of the shape that you're painting so always go in that direction um, that you see the shape I wanted to add a bit of a pop to the light green mountains so I'm going back in with lights up green and white to define that a bit more. Just bringing out some of the whites in sections I see a bit more brighter like you know those lines and uh, to the road and just you know a few little highlights. I do see some yellow warmer tones to the lighter mountains so I am mixing in some yellow and white to add some pop of color to the mountains at the back. Adding that same color to the grass uh, to the sides as well. Remember to go in upward motion so that you give the impression of movement and grass. At this point I am tuning in to the little details that I notice in my reference pic and just adding a few dabs here and there to build on this painting. We are almost nearing the end, just a few more details and we will be done. I wanted to go back to the tree that we see towards the left. Now it is a bit dark to begin with so I was a bit unsure what to do with it. Um, so you will see the process of me changing it quite a few times. But right now I'm, just, I'm using raw sienna, olive green and white to build at the top of the tree. Using that same brush, let's add in some final details like fences to the foreground. Not sure if you can see this in the video but you will be able to see some cattle and cows far back so I'm just making tiny dots with black with a, uh, a thin brush to capture the, these really fun details.
so here we go back to this tree like I said I would so I'm just adding some lighter green version again which I was somewhat happy with so I just left it as is Alright, it's time to take off this tape and see what we have. Don't you just love those clean lines? It is so satisfying to watch. And this completes our loose acrylic landscape for today. I'm really happy with the way this turned out and if you do try this out, don't forget to tag me over at Instagram or on my Facebook group. I love looking at your recreations. It always makes my day. Like mentioned, if you do want a real-time extended version, I do have it over at Skillshare. The link is below. Fun announcement, I am running a giveaway for my Skillshare followers only for reaching over 1000 followers on there. So if you are interested in participating, all you have to do is click the link uh, below and all the details of the giveaway will be on my homepage. I am giving away this original acrylic floral canvas painting um, and remember that you can get one full month free so if you just want to sign in just to participate in the giveaway and then cancel later on you can very well do that. On the plus side you will get access to over 10,000 creative classes on Skillshare from talented teachers all over so it really doesn't hurt to try. Hope you can join in and I cannot wait to share my art with one of you. Thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you all in my next video. Bye guys.